Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome distinguished guests, faculty, staff, and especially our incoming students and your families and friends. We're here today to continue a valued tradition at Western University of Health Sciences that began years ago. The university has many traditions that have evolved over the past 40 years of its his of history of the university. However, this particular ceremony is significant in that it truly symbolizes our institutional and educational philosophy of educating skilled and compassionate healthcare professionals who are excellent in science and compassionate in caregiving. You have my highest regard and I wish you much success this year. I would also like to personally thank our dignitaries that were able to attend today's ceremony to help in welcoming the class of 2024. Dr. Diane Branks, President-Elect for CPMA and a podiatric medical physician with Kaiser Permanente. Dr. Hinvu C. Nguyen, Clinical Assistant Professor of Podiatric Medicine with Western U uh, and a podiatric medical physician with Kaiser Permanente. Dr. Beverly Guidry, Senior Vice President for Western U Student Affairs, University Student Affairs. Dr. Stephanie Bolin, Western U's Chief of Mission Integration. Dr. Diane Abraham, Western U's Senior Vice President for University Advancement. Dr. Clive Houston Brown, Western U's Senior Vice President, Chief Operating Officer. Dr. David Barron, Senior Vice President and Provost for Western U. And Barbara O'Malley, Chief Communications Officer for Western U. And now we'd like to share a message from President Dr. Wilson. Good day, Western U matriculants. Congratulations on being accepted to join our wonderful institution. You join the largest graduate health sciences university in America with nine colleges and a unique interprofessional way of caring with a compassionate healing touch. Today, your journey begins. The white coat ceremony is a rite of passage for health science students. It marks the acceptance of your student professional oaths. It signifies your entrance into the health sciences as a leader committed to ethical practice. And above all else, first, do no harm. This ceremony is also an important part of your journey to become a health professional as you are cloaked with your white coat in the presence of family and friends, other students, faculty and staff, Appreciate this very special moment. You will look back on this day from time to time with nostalgia, which may renew you at points throughout your career. Today, you begin to build awareness of your opportunities and responsibilities as healers. Today, you embrace Western U as a student and take on the Western U ethos. That is built on our foundation in humanistic science. You will embody humanism in everything you do through caring, respect, empathy, trust, and inclusion. You will sustain a pioneering culture of innovation, courage, and passion. And lastly, you will strive for excellence in all that you do. Stay focused on humanism to teach, to heal together. Enjoy this day and know that all of us here at Western U are able to help you succeed and I wish you every success. Thank you, Dr. Wilson. It's now indeed a pleasure to introduce our speakers and our faculty speakers. Rod Warren, MedPro keynote speaker. Mr. Warren is the Vice President and National Sales Director of the Healthcare Professional Division. Dr. Adam Howard, CPMA guest speaker and president of the California Podiatric Medical Association. Dr. Jonathan Leibowitz, Associate Dean, Clinical Education and Graduate Placement, who will be giving us the history of the white coat. Dr. Axon Nuvong, who will lead us through the administration of the Podiatric Physician's Oath. Mr. Forbing, Board of Trustees Secretary for Western University of Health Sciences. Mr. Forbing will now deliver his message 
from the Board of Trustees to our incoming class. Thank you, Mr. Forbing. Mr. Forbing, I think you're muted. There we are. Good morning, distinguished guests, faculty, staff, and especially our new incoming students. On behalf of the university, welcome to the College of Podiatric Medicine White Coat Ceremony. We are gathered here today to continue a valued tradition at Western University of Health Sciences. By having a ceremony where entering students are cloaked with their very first white lab coat, we are calling attention to the individual's choice to become a doctor and of equal importance, bringing to focus the true meaning of their choice, that you must cure, but also care. Students, soon you will be cloaked with your first white coat. Wear it as a badge of pride, symbolizing your choice to become a doctor of podiatric medicine. You are entering Western U at an exciting time. Um, you might stop and think differently based on COVID, but you never know what's gonna happen next in our lives. You will have the opportunity to participate in didactic and clinical activities with other students of Western U. You will graduate with a better understanding of what other health professionals do and will also know how to participate in and or promote the team approach to patient care and health care management. You have to remember that what you're looking at is the underpinning of your patient. The feet are the most important part of the body. As the white coat is placed on your shoulders today, remember that you are entering into the very special field of healing arts and education. In the future, you will be sought after for your knowledge, skill, and caring. This coat carries with it a responsibility to be excellent in science, compassionate in caregiving, and knowledge and education. In closing, you have all made a final fine selection for your education. You have my best wishes for personal and for professional success. Welcome to Western University and you will be involved with the university for the rest of your life. So learn well, and appreciate what you're gonna go through for the next few years. Thank you for being here. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Forbing. And now I'd like to welcome Dr. Howard to deliver his message for our incoming class from the California Podiatric Medical Association. Class of 2024, thank you for allowing me to be here today. Certainly these are unusual times. I'm more of a face-to-face -face communicator and like to do these addresses in person. Um, but what is tough for us now will only make us better, stronger, and grow not only as providers, but as individuals. The white coat ceremony, in my opinion, was the first major, or it's the next major step in your journey. It's the first time I ever felt like I was really becoming a doctor. I always believed that the hard work I put in would be worth it once I received my white coat. For me, I always viewed myself as more of a hands-on learner. And being in that environment allowed me to not only use what I learned with basic sciences in class, but apply it and grow and learn as a future practitioner. This will be your opportunity to shine, to become the person that you want to be. You're becoming a healer, a teacher, and patients will look to you for guidance, and in some cases, hope. Do not take this lightly. Even as a student, your brief interactions with patients will have a permanent effect on their life and their well being. Being the president of CPMA has been an adventure. I've had the pleasure to work closely with APMA, CMA, COA, OPSC, among other organizations 
to continue to advance medicine and collaborate on ways to improve healthcare. It was a great year until COVID hit and the TAM broke. At times it felt like I was navigating through stormy waters, not knowing what lied ahead. All joking aside, it has been a great experience and something I would never think I would be part of. The importance of me telling you this is why I believe even as a student, you need to be connected to your professional association. With COVID in mind, CPMA has provided daily updates to our members regarding ways to safeguard their practices, obtain business loans to keep their practice doors open, and help businesses and practices remain solvent. Make no mistake, we are essential providers and CPMA help keep providers practice doors open. CPMA and specifically Dr. Leibovitz also had to convert our Western Foot and Ankle Conference to an online platform in a matter of weeks. It was a huge undertaking. And Dr. Leibovitz and staff did a fantastic job. Dr. Leibovitz. As far as online conferences go, given the circumstances, I don't believe it could have gone any better. A global pandemic can teach you a lot of things. As an association, we learn new ways to improve our Western experience. So next year, our conference will be even better. We learn new ways to cut expenses and save money for our association and members. For all of you, I cannot stress enough the importance to be a CPMA member. You stay up to date on legal correspondence, changes in healthcare plans, and our legislative efforts. Beyond that, it is a way to stay connected to your profession, professional association. You have incurred a lot of debt. And to go through all of this, being a CPMA member will help you maximize your practice. We even help connect you with potential doctors that are looking to hire new associates through our vast network of connections across the state. At this time, I would encourage all of you to start contacting your local societies and ask to join upcoming dinner meetings once they resume. This is a good way to meet new prospective employers if you're looking to stay in the area. Even if you're looking to relocate in the future, we have connections across the nation that can help you and get connected. There are 17 societies across the state. So even if you're on rotation in an outside area, you can find out who is there and get connected and start showing up. To me, that shows initiative, it shows drive, and it's a desire to be part of a family. And after all, that's what we are, right? Family. So in closing, I wanna congratulate all of you on your achievements. Stay motivated, stay hungry, and always give your best. Thank you and welcome to the CPMA family. Thank you, Dr. Howard. And now I would like to welcome Mr. Warren for his message for our incoming class from MedPro. Mr. Warren. Thank you, Dr. Satterfield. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the 2020 uh, Western University of Health Sciences College of Podiatric Medicine white coat ceremony. I've kind of enjoyed uh, watching everybody try their coats on, and clearly this is different than what you're used to. Uh, Dr. Satterfield shared with me via email how cool a ceremony this is, and, and yours is going to be unique in, in yet another way. But I want to thank both Dr. Sat Dr. Satterfield and Leibovitz for uh, allowing me to speak and have a few minutes today. So as I was you know, thinking about what I wanted to share and what I wanted to talk about today, um, you know, I, I kind of drew on some things that I had, had talked with Dr. Leibovitz about over the last few weeks. And that's kind of how this, and last months, really how this came to be that I speak today. I work for MedPro Group. We're the uh, largest and oldest malpractice insurance company in the United States. And he and I were working together on a few different things, one of which uh, Dr. Howard just mentioned, the Western. So the more we talked and the more I got to know him, the, the passion for podiatric medicine, and in particular, the passion for Western U, really started to come through. So I was nothing but excited to, to get to talk today because I think as he put it, you know, Western U is a special place educating special people. So um, I jumped at the opportunity to be a part of today. But as I thought about what I would talk about, I kind of went back to some of my own educational experiences. And, you know, my undergraduate time was pretty much like most people's. I did it, got it done while I was younger, um, not married, no children. 
But when I started grad school, that happened about the same time um, that we had our first child. And, you know, as you might imagine, starting a career, starting grad school, starting a family was a lot of things at once. So as I worked on my MBA and I worked on my career, um, the months of taking school morphed into years. And before you knew it, we had four children and I was eight years into my MBA program. Um, but I have to tell you that one of the proudest moments of my life was the day I graduated, walked across the stage and my four kids were in the audience and they were little kids, but they were there and got to see me graduate. So it's a, a proud moment. I told myself often while I was working on grad school and I've told my kids at every level of education since that education is the one thing that no one can ever take away from you. So, you know, I would tell you today, you know, you're working hard for it. So please treasure it and everything it will bring to your life. Now, I want to take a couple of minutes to talk about Western U specifically and just what I've come to learn about it. Um, in my role at MedPro, you know, we know all too well how bad outcomes can be in the healthcare unit and in the healthcare world. Um, it's inevitable. The best doctors can have lawsuits come against them for whatever reason. It's a reality that doctors have to face. But one of the things that I can share today that I have found to be true over 20 some years in malpractice insurance is that the snowball starts when the doctor patient relationship begins to break down. Um, I can name on, a, on one hand, probably the number of lawsuits where the doctor was still beloved by the person suing them. There's always some sort of problem. Um, outcomes in medicine aren't always gonna be perfect, but what gets it started is when you can't communicate. Outcomes that should be preventable, they're not preventable, they end up in lawsuits. So what can we do to make it different as a, as a group and as a, as a country? we can educate doctors the right way. And in my mind, that's exactly what's going on at Western University now. Um, three things really popped out of me, and I'm going to read a couple of them. The mission statement of Western University of Health Sciences College of Podiatric Medicine, mentor and educate students by providing innovative educational experiences, including interprofessional patient care, and producing in them a passion to improve the lives of others. And then the core values. I mean, even more, embody a humanistic tradition that encompasses compassion, humility, integrity, truth, quality, and service. Those two statements to me are very, very powerful. Um, but mission statements in and of themselves, you know, they don't mean anything. There has to be something behind them. So, you know, you cannot let yourself become a physician that forgets what started you down this life path that you're on right now. You cannot let yourself be the student that focuses on just the science and forgets the power of how your patient feels, because in the end, that's what you're doing, what you're doing it for. And you cannot forget that while you're saving life and limb, you are also the saving the, the spirit of your patient. Um, like I said, mission statements, all industries have them. We have them in our business. Every insurance company I've ever worked for, we've had them. But what was so fascinating to me is how real it is as I was talking with Dr. Leibovitz back in June, he was sharing with me and you could just hear the excitement in his voice when he started talking about, you know, the humanistic approach and the humanism that was going on in the teaching um, programs and protocols at Western U. And as a patient and a professional that works with defending podiatric physicians, I do not believe the importance of humanism can be overstressed. I mean, it's just that important. We've already heard that word a couple of times today. And I think that's, again, just reinforces how important that is. Finally, um, I'm actually on vacation right now and I'm, I'm in Yellowstone National Park doing this. And I've been here a couple of days and, and yesterday, I, I noticed a woman just kind of limping along. She sat down at a bench and her husband sat down by her and then he, he stood back up. And I couldn't help but overhear her say, my foot's really bothering me. And her husband stood there patiently and she took her shoe off and she put her shoe back on and she kind of messed with her sock and all that. And I just sat there and wondered how much of this trip to a beautiful national park had been negatively impacted. And, and this box that she was probably checking off in her life journey to go to Yellowstone 
how much was it going south because of her foot pain? So, I mean, the, the point being, as a future podiatric physician, you have to know what you're doing will help with those kind of moments be better than maybe they otherwise would have. You know, I congratulate you on being one of 10 applicants that submitted to Western University's College of Podiatric Medicine. You've already demonstrated that you rise above others. I would encourage all of you to keep rising. I think all the opportunities are gonna be here. I think you're at a fantastic school. I wish you the best of luck in your educational and professional endeavors, and I appreciate your time today. Thank you so much, Mr. Warren. I'd now like to welcome Dr. Leibowitz for his speech regarding the history of the white coat ceremony. John. Thank you, Dr. Satterfield. And welcome to the class of 2024. So in the world of medicine, the white coat ceremony is in its infancy. We have records of medical practice dating back 3000 years and more widely known medical writings of Greek physicians from nearly 2,500 years ago. Meanwhile, this is the only the 29th year of the white coat ceremony. Dr. Arnold Gold, a professor of clinical neurology and pediatrics, and his wife created this tradition through the Gold Foundation. The first ceremony took place in 1993 at Columbia University College of Physicians and Surgeons. Dr. Gold felt the technological advances in healthcare were extremely beneficial, yet they potentially eroded the human connection with patients. So instead of waiting until the Hippocratic Oath at graduation to pledge your commitment to your patients and their families, Dr. Gold created the White Coat Ceremony to emphasize humanism as the central tenet of healthcare at the onset of your medical education. According to the Gold Foundation, the most important aspect of the ritual is the oath you take before your family, faculty, and university administration, recognizing your obligation and expressing your commitment to care for your patients. The impact of the ceremony has been tremendous. In just 29 years since the first ceremony, the white coat ceremony spans 99% of all accredited medical schools in the United States. It's held in over 300 nursing schools, in podiatric medical schools, physician assistant schools, and many other healthcare professional schools. And the ceremony now spans 19 countries. While the reach of the ceremony is astounding in just a short period of time, the personal impact of this rite of passage is also inspiring. Consistent with the original rituals of the ceremony, you are also presented with a white coat, which represents much more than a simple article of clothing we don to keep our clothes clean. Similar to the weight of the oath, the white coat carries a humbling responsibility, symbolic of the trust and confidence patients have in you and the moral and ethical responsibilities that come with patients and their loved ones relying on you as you affect their lives physically and emotionally. As you learn about the body and mind and about treating patients, never forget the lessons learned from your parents and those closest to you. You learned the meaning of a white coat ceremony long ago. They taught you about caring and compassion each time you heard someone remind you to look someone in the eye, to stop and listen and be courteous and respectful, you had a white coat ceremony. They taught you the golden rule, do unto others as you wish done unto you, which truly defines what it means to care. So always remember why you have the coat and why you took the oath now. You're about to start a long journey to learn the information necessary to evaluate and treat your patients. But as Theodore Roosevelt once said, Nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. These words could have easily been written by Dr. Gold, as the history of the ceremony demonstrates his desire for healthcare professionals to preserve human interaction, to listen, to be compassionate, and most of all, to truly care. Thank you, Dr. Leibowitz. I'd like to point out that we have another dignitary who's joined us. He doesn't have his video today, but I'd like to welcome Dr. Lester Jones, who um, preceded me uh, in this position as Dean, and it's an honor to have him today. Will the students now come forward to introduce yourselves one by one in the order that you have been rehearsing and receive your white coat? Desiree of Agunda, Orange, California.
Jacob Abjolina, Palos Verdes, California. Chaitanya Diga, Cupertino, California. Aisha Maud, Cincinnati, Ohio. For Ken Ranke, Waiter, California. Jeffrey Adler, Lewis Wake, North Carolina. Merritt Iskander, Northridge, California. Victoria Banuelas, El Paso, Texas. I'm Claudia Brajas from Holland, Michigan. Harsh Balsar, San Dimas, California. Hadia Barucha, Irvine, California. Haley Wondrostrom, Kerman, California. Aram Caldera, Pacoima, California. Vivian Chan, Arcadia, California. Elaine Chu, San Marino. Tia Furness, Santa Rosa, California.
Tina Geddes, La Cunada, California. Juan Gonzalez, Orange, California. Ashfield Gerald, New York City, New York. I'm Noor Horton, Lexington, Virginia. Maz Khan, Chicago, Illinois. Eddie Lamateo, New Milford, New Jersey. Kielsen Lee, Sacramento, California. Angel Lynn, Northridge, California. Alexis Linares, Chino Hills, California. Chanel Mariano, Monterey, California. Anthony McColgan, San Diego, California. Nisham joined my again, San Diego, California. Rafael Muradian, Los Angeles, California. Denise Perrazzo Martinez, Los Angeles, California.
Sophia Rosai, El Paso, Texas. Omid Patras, San Diego, California. Mm -hmm. uh, Rachel Rosenfeld, Honolulu, Hawaii. Sadaf Lali Sadat, Dallas, Texas. Josh Preet Singera, Fresno, California. Savannah Santiago, Poway, California. Anish Sharma, San Jose, California. Mitchell Sklar, Northville, Michigan. Tian Ting, Westminster, California. Destiny Baez, Azusa, California. Mark Train, Westminster, California. Timothy Tran, Westminster, California. Harsh Varshney, Fremont, California. Scott Villaluce, Las Vegas, Nevada. Matthew Veramontes, West Covina, California. Seth Warren, West Bloomfield, Michigan. Uh, 
<laughs> Douglas Wang, Diamond Bar, California. Keith Wilson, Diamond Bar, California. Desiree Abagunda, Orange, California. No. Azra Majdub, Woodland Hills, California. Well, let's congratulate all of them. What a wonderful class. I've, I've just been sitting here beaming from ear to ear watching the, the lovely families and friends with you. It's, it's a big day for everybody. Um, now I'd like to introduce uh, to you uh, Dr. Axon Nuvong, who will administer the Podiatric Physician's Oath. Congratulations, class of 2024. Uh, welcome guests, with exceptions of our incoming we ask you to please turn off your video at this time. Incoming class of 2024 and fellow podiatric physicians, please read along with me in reciting the podiatric oath. The oath appears here on your screen. I do solemnly swear to my God on my honor, to those who have taught me, and by all things that I hold sacred, that as a practitioner of podiatric medicine, I shall abide by the following precepts. I shall above all hold paramount the welfare of my patient, regardless of fee or favor. I shall neither prescribe nor give any treatment or drug which will be detrimental to his or her well being. I shall endeavor to uphold the dignity of the professional way of life the aims of which are to render public service. I shall cherish those who have taught me, hold high their principle and precepts. And I pledge that I shall do everything that I'm able to do to promote and protect the profession of podiatric medicine and to aid my fellow practitioners. In swearing to this oath, I hereby dedicate myself in service to the health of humanity and hold as my goal, the relief of pain and suffering. If I keep this oath, may I receive God's guidance in the practice of my art and may I enjoy my life in the respect of all men and women. Congratulations, class of 2024, thank you. That's wonderful. The administration, the faculty and staff would like to acknowledge and thank all of our guests who were with us today. Uh, we're truly delighted that the class of uh, DPM 2024 is now part of the CPM family. Students, please change your image view screen to gallery view. And we ask for your family and friends to join you in front of the camera so we can all celebrate together. Our college has created special messages that they'd like to share with all of you. This concludes our ceremony, uh, as we, but we will continue to watch uh, the celebration here and to highlight you and your family. Congratulations. <laughs>
Good job. Yay. Congratulations. Welcome. Yay. Yay. You made it. Congratulations. <laughs> Aloha. Yay. That's a lot of proud parents. Good Congratulations. Job, Welcome. Congratulations, everybody. Good job, good job. Oh, cool.